Welcome to another episode of the True Crime Tales. Today's episode is called, Convicted Serial Killer and Sex Offender, Jeffrey Dahmer. Jeffrey Dahmer was born in Milwaukee, on May 21, 1960, to Lionel and Joyce Dahmer. He was described as an energetic and happy child until the age of four, when a traumatic and painful recovery following surgery to correct a double hernia seemed to affect a change in the boy. Noticeably subdued, he became increasingly withdrawn following the birth of his younger brother and the family's frequent moves. By the time Dahmer was of school age, the family had moved to Ohio. From a young age, Dahmer developed a fascination with animal bones and studied how to be clean and preserve them. As a child, he collected large insects and the skulls of small animals, preserved in jars of formaldehyde, according to the Brian Masters book, The Shrine of Jeffrey Dahmer. Jeffrey Dahmer was an American serial killer who took the lives of 17 men and boys between 1978 and 1991. Over the course of more than 13 years, Dahmer sought out his victims, mostly black men, at gay bars, malls, and bus stops, lured them home with promises of money or sex, and gave them alcohol laced with drugs before strangling them to death. He would then engage in sex acts with the corpses before dismembering them and disposing of them, often keeping body parts as souvenirs. He frequently took photos of his victims at various stages of the murder process, so he could recollect each act afterward and relive the experience. By his early teens, he was disengaged, tense, and largely friendless. Dahmer claims that his compulsions toward necrophilia and murder began around the age of 14, but it appears that the breakdown of his parents' marriage and their acrimonious divorce a few years later might have been the catalyst for turning these thoughts into actions. His parents' numerous arguments and the constant tension in the house made Dahmer question the solidity of his family and life, according to Masters. Dahmer also started drinking at age 14, and by the time of his first killing at age 18, his alcohol consumption had spun out of control. He dropped out of Ohio State University after one quarter term, and his recently remarried father insisted that he join the Army. Dahmer enlisted in late December 1978 and was posted to Germany shortly thereafter. His drinking problem persisted, and in early 1981, the army discharged him. Although German authorities would later investigate possible connections between Dahmer and murders that took place in the area during that time, it is not believed that he took any victims while serving in the armed forces. Following his discharge, Dahmer returned home to Ohio. An arrest later that year for disorderly conduct prompted his father to send Dahmer to live with his grandmother Catherine Dahmer in Wisconsin, but his alcohol problem continued, and he was arrested the following summer for indecent exposure. He was arrested once again in 1986 when two boys accused him of masturbating in front of them. He received a one-year probationary sentence. He was careful to select victims on the fringes of society, who were often itinerant or borderline criminal, making their disappearances less noticeable and reducing the likelihood of his capture. He lured them to his home with promises of money or sex, then strangled them to death. He engaged in sex acts with their bodies and kept body parts and photos as souvenirs. His most popular nicknames, the Milwaukee Cannibal and the Milwaukee Monster, reflect his heinous crimes. Dahmer's first murder occurred just after graduating from Revere High School, in June 1978, 
when he picked up an 18-year-old hitchhiker named Stephen Hicks and took him home to his parents' house. Dahmer proceeded to get the young man drunk, and when Hicks tried to go, Dahmer said I didn't want him to leave. Dahmer killed him by striking him in the head and strangling him with a barbell. Dahmer dismembered Hicks' corpse, packed the body parts in plastic bags, and buried them behind his parents' home. He later exhumed the remains, crushed the bones with a sledgehammer, and scattered them across a wooded ravine. Much later in September 1987, that Dahmer took his second victim, Stephen Twomey. They checked into a hotel room and drank, and Dahmer eventually awoke to find Twomey dead, with no memory of the previous night's activities. He later said that he intended to drug Twomey, but not kill him, and he could not believe this had happened. Dahmer bought a large suitcase to transport Twomey's body to his grandmother's basement, where he dismembered and masturbated on the corpse before disposing of the remains. He kept Twomey's head, which was wrapped in a blanket, for weeks after the murder. Dahmer later said that after killing Twomey, his obsession with killing went into full swing and he didn't even try to stop it after that. He killed two more victims at his grandmother's house before she forced him to move out in 1988. She had no knowledge of his crimes but was tired of his drinking, his tendency to bring young men to her house, and the foul smells occasionally coming from her basement. In September 1989, he moved into a new apartment since his grandmother forced him out. It was at that time that Dahmer lured a 13-year-old Laotian boy to his house, claiming he wanted to take nude photos of him. This resulted in charges of sexual exploitation and second-degree sexual assault for Dahmer. He was released on bail at that time. While awaiting sentencing for his sexual assault case, Dahmer again put his grandmother's basement to gruesome use. In March 1989, he lured, drugged, strangled, sodomized, photographed, dismembered, and disposed of Anthony Sears, an aspiring model. Dahmer found Sears particularly attractive and later said he did not want to lose him, and so Sears became the first victim from whom Dahmer kept preserved body parts for a long period of time, mummifying his head and genitals. In May of 1989, Dahmer went on trial for his child molestation case. In that courtroom he was the model of contrition, arguing eloquently, in his own defense, about how he had seen the error of his ways and that his arrest marked a turning point in his life. His defense counsel argued that he needed treatment, not incarceration, and the judge agreed, handing down a one-year prison sentence on day release, allowing Dahmer to work at his job during the day and return to the prison at night, as well as a five-year probationary sentence. It was at that time that Dahmer's father, Lionel, wrote a letter to the court asking for them to request psychological help before his son's parole. It was then, however, Dahmer was granted an early release by the judge after serving only 10 months of his sentence. He briefly lived with his grandmother following his release, during which time he does not appear to have added to his body count, before moving back into his own apartment. Over the next two years, Dahmer would kill 12 more people, bringing his total victim count to 17. On or near May 20, 1990, he met his next victim. During this time he was a prostitute whose name was Raymond Smith, whom Dahmer lured to his apartment for sex, gave a drink laced with sleeping tablets, and then strangled. Dahmer took photos of his body in suggestive positions before dismembering him. 
With his next victim, Edward Smith, Dahmer accidentally destroyed his skull while trying to dry it in the oven, making it explode. He later told police he felt rotten about Smith's murder because was unable to keep anything from his body, making it feel like a true waste. Dahmer started developing rituals as he progressed with his killings, experimenting with chemical means of disposal, and often consuming the flesh of his victims. Dahmer also attempted crude lobotomies. He drilled into the skull of Errol Lindsay, his eleventh victim, while he was still alive and injected him with muriatic acid. Dahmer hoped this would place Lindsay into a permanent submissive state, but Lindsay awoke during the procedure and said, I have a headache. What time is it? So Dahmer strangled him. On May 27, 1991, Dahmer's neighbor Sander Smith called the police to report that an Asian boy was running naked in the street. When the police arrived, the boy was incoherent, and they accepted the word of Dahmer, a white man in a largely poor black community, that the boy was his 19-year-old lover. In fact, the boy was 14 years old and was, unbeknownst to Dahmer, the younger brother of the Laotian teen Dahmer had molested three years earlier. The police escorted Dahmer and the boy home. Clearly not wishing to become embroiled in a homosexual domestic disturbance, they took only a cursory look around before leaving. According to Dahmer, an officer peeked his head around in the bedroom but didn't really take a good look and then left after telling Dahmer to take care of the boy. Once they left the scene, Dahmer injected hydrochloric acid into the boy's brain, killing him. Had the police conducted even a basic search, they would have found the body of Dahmer's twelfth victim, Tony Hughes. The following day, May 28th, Dahmer took a day's leave from work to devote himself to the dismemberment of the bodies of Cynthia Sumphone and Hughes. He retained both victims' skulls. On June 30, Dahmer traveled to Chicago, where he encountered a 20-year-old named Matt Turner at a bus station. Turner accepted Dahmer's offer to travel to Milwaukee for a professional photo shoot. At the apartment, Dahmer drugged, strangled and dismembered Turner and placed his head and internal organs in separate plastic bags in the freezer. Turner was not reported missing. Five days later, on July 5th, Dahmer lured 23-year-old Jeremiah Weinberger from a Chicago bar to his apartment on the promise of spending the weekend with him. He drugged Weinberger and twice injected boiling water through his skull, sending him into a coma from which he died two days later. Dahmer killed four more men before he was finally arrested. One of his last victims was Oliver Lacey, 24, whose body Dahmer had sex with before dismembering the corpse. He kept Lacey's head and heart in his refrigerator and his skeleton in a freezer. On July 22, 1991, Dahmer approached three men with an offer of $100 to accompany him to his apartment to pose for nude photographs, drink beer, and simply keep him company. One of the trio, 32-year-old Tracy Edwards, agreed to accompany him to his apartment. Upon entering Dahmer's apartment, Edwards noted a foul odor and several boxes of hydrochloric acid on the floor, which Dahmer claimed to use for cleaning bricks. After some minor conversation, Edwards responded to Dahmer's request to turn his head and view his tropical fish, whereupon Dahmer placed a handcuff upon his wrist. When Edwards asked, What's happening? Dahmer unsuccessfully attempted to cuff his wrists together, then told Edwards to accompany him to the bedroom to pose for nude pictures. 
While inside the bedroom, Edwards noted nude male posters on the wall and that a videotape of The Exorcist 3 was playing. He also noted a blue 57-gallon drum in the corner, from which a strong odor emanated. Dahmer then brandished a knife and informed Edwards he intended to take nude pictures of him. In an attempt to appease Dahmer, Edwards unbuttoned his shirt, saying he would allow him to do so if he would remove the handcuffs and put the knife away. In response to this promise, Dahmer simply turned his attention towards the TV. Edwards observed Dahmer rocking back and forth and chanting before turning his attention back to him. He placed his head on Edwards' chest, listened to his heartbeat, and with a knife pressed against his intended victim, informed Edwards he intended to eat his heart. In continuous attempts to prevent Dahmer from attacking him, Edwards repeated that he was Dahmer's friend and that he was not going to run away. Edwards had decided he was going to either jump from a window or run through the unlocked front door upon the next available opportunity. When Edwards next stated he needed to use the bathroom, he asked if they could sit with a beer in the living room, where there was air conditioning. Dahmer consented, and the pair walked to the living room when Edwards exited the bathroom. Inside the living room, Edwards waited until he observed Dahmer have a momentary lapse of concentration before requesting to use the bathroom again. When Edwards rose from the couch, he noted Dahmer was not holding the handcuffs, whereupon Edwards punched him in the face, knocking Dahmer off balance, and ran out the front door. Two Milwaukee police officers were led to Dahmer when they picked up Tracy Edwards, a 32-year-old black man who was wandering the streets with handcuffs dangling from his wrist. They decided to investigate the man's claims that a weird dude had drugged and restrained him. They arrived at Dahmer's apartment, where he calmly offered to get the keys for the handcuffs. Edwards claimed that the knife Dahmer had threatened him with was in the bedroom. When the officer went in to corroborate the story, he noticed Polaroid photographs of dismembered bodies lying around. Dahmer was subdued by the officers, after which he muttered the words, For what I did, I should be dead. Subsequent searches revealed a head in the refrigerator, three more in the freezer, and a catalog of other horrors, including preserved skulls, jars containing genitalia, and an extensive gallery of macabre Polaroid photographs of his victims. Dahmer later said he had planned to build a private altar from his victim's skulls, adorned with incense sticks and globe lights. He hoped the altar would be a place where I could feel at home. Dahmer's killing spree ended when he was arrested on July 22, 1991. The body parts found in Dahmer's refrigerator and Polaroid photographs of his victims became inextricably associated with his notorious killing spree. A more detailed search of the apartment, conducted by the Milwaukee Police's Criminal Investigation Bureau, revealed a total of four severed heads in Dahmer's kitchen. A total of seven skulls, some painted, some bleached, were found in Dahmer's bedroom and inside a closet. Investigators discovered collected blood drippings upon a tray at the bottom of Dahmer's refrigerator, plus two human hearts and a portion of arm muscle, each wrapped inside plastic bags upon the shelves. In Dahmer's freezer, investigators discovered an entire torso, plus a bag of human organs and flesh stuck to the ice at the bottom. Elsewhere in apartment 213, investigators discovered two entire skeletons, a pair of severed hands, two severed and preserved penises, a mummified scalp and, in the 57-gallon drum, three further dismembered torsos dissolving in the acid solution. 
A total of 74 Polaroid pictures detailing the dismemberment of Dahmer's victims were found. In reference to the recovery of body parts and artifacts at 924 North 25th Street, the chief medical examiner later stated, it was more like dismantling someone's museum than an actual crime scene. Beginning in the early hours of July 23, 1991, Dahmer was questioned by Detective Patrick Kennedy as to the murders he had committed and the evidence found at his apartment. Over the following two weeks, Kennedy and, later, Detective Dennis Murphy conducted numerous interviews with Dahmer, which, when combined, totaled over 60 hours. Dahmer waived his right to have a lawyer present throughout his interrogations, adding he wished to confess all as he had created this horror, and it only makes sense I do everything to put an end to it. He readily admitted to having murdered 16 young men in Wisconsin since 1987, with one further victim, Stephen Hicks, killed in Ohio in 1978. Dahmer readily admitted to engaging in necrophilia with several of his victims' bodies, including performing sexual acts with their viscera as he dismembered their bodies in his bathtub. Having noted that much of the blood pooled inside his victims' chest after death, Dahmer first removed their internal organs, then suspended the torso so the blood drained into his bathtub, before dicing any organs he did not wish to retain and paring the flesh from the body. The bones he wished to dispose of were pulverized or acidified, with soylax and bleach solutions used to aid in the preservation of the skeletons and skulls he wished to keep. Dahmer confessed to having consumed the hearts, liver, biceps, and portions of five of three victims he had killed at the Oxford Apartments, Raymond Smith, Ernest Miller, and Oliver Lacey, and to have retained the flesh and organs of other victims for intended consumption. Typically, Dahmer would tenderize the body parts he intended to consume prior to preparing meals flavored with various condiments. Dahmer also stated he had been in the process of constructing a private altar of victim skulls, which he had intended to display on the black table located in his living room and upon which he had photographed the bodies of many of his victims. This display of skulls was to be adorned at each side with the complete skeletons of Miller and Lacey. The four severed heads found in his kitchen were to have all flesh removed and used in this altar, as was the skull of at least one future victim. Incense sticks were to be placed at each end of the black table, above which Dahmer intended to place a large blue lamp with extending blue globe lights. The entire construction was to be placed before a window covered with a black, opaque shower curtain, in front of which Dahmer intended to sit in a black leather chair. Dahmer's trial began in January 1992. Given that most Dahmer's victims were black, there were considerable racial tensions, so strict security precautions were taken including an eight-foot barrier of bulletproof glass that separated him from the gallery. The inclusion of only one black person on the jury provoked further unrest, but was ultimately contained and short-lived. Lionel Dahmer and his second wife attended the trial throughout. Dahmer initially pleaded not guilty to all charges despite having confessed to the killings during police interrogation. He eventually changed his plea to guilty by virtue of insanity. His defense then offered the gruesome details of his behavior as proof that only someone insane could commit such terrible acts. The jury chose to believe the prosecution's assertion that Dahmer was fully aware that his acts were evil and chose to commit them anyway. 
On February 15, 1992, they returned after approximately 10 hours deliberation to find him guilty, but sane, on all counts. He was sentenced to 15 consecutive life terms in prison, with a 16th term tacked on in May. Dahmer reportedly adjusted well to prison life at the Columbia Correctional Institution in south-central Wisconsin, though he was initially kept apart from the general population. He eventually convinced authorities to allow him to integrate more fully with other inmates. He found religion in the form of books and photos sent to him by his father, and he was granted permission by the Columbia Correctional Institution to be baptized by a local pastor. In accordance with his inclusion in regular work details, Dahmer was assigned to work with two other convicted murderers, Scarver and Jesse Anderson. After they had been left alone to complete their tasks, Guards returned to find that Scarver had brutally beaten both men with a metal bar from the prison weight room. Dahmer was pronounced dead after approximately one hour. Anderson died from his injuries days later. A prison guard claimed that shortly after the murders, Scarver, who was believed to be schizophrenic, said that God told me to do it. In 2015, Scarver spoke to the New York Post about his reasons for killing Dahmer. Scarver alleged that he was disturbed not only by Dahmer's crimes, but by a habit Dahmer had developed of fashioning severed limbs from prison food to antagonize other inmates. After being taunted by Dahmer and Anderson during their work detail, Scarver said that he confronted Dahmer about his crimes before beating the two men to death. He also claimed that prison guards allowed the murders to happen by leaving them alone. Catherine Lacey, the mother of Dahmer's victim Oliver Lacey, said his death brought her no closure, the hurt is worse now, because he's not suffering like we are. His victims and how they were killed are 1990 May 20th, Raymond Lamont Smith also known as Ricky Beeks, 32. The first victim to be killed at Dahmer's North 25th Street apartment. Smith was a male sex worker whom Dahmer encountered at a tavern. Dahmer gave Smith a drink laced with sleeping pills, then strangled him on his kitchen floor. His skull was spray-painted and retained. June 14th Edward Warren Smith, 27. A known acquaintance of Dahmer, who was last seen in his company at a party. Dahmer acidified Smith's skeleton. His skull was destroyed unintentionally when placed in the oven in an effort to remove moisture. No remains were ever found. September 2nd, Ernest Marquez Miller, 22. Miller was a dance student whom Dahmer encountered outside a bookstore. According to Dahmer, he was especially attracted to Miller's physique. He was killed by having his carotid artery severed before being dismembered in the bathtub, with Dahmer storing his entire skeleton in the bottom drawer of a filing cabinet and his heart, liver, biceps and portions of his thighs in the freezer for later consumption. September 24, David Courtney Thomas, 22. Encountered Dahmer near the Grand Avenue Mall, he was lured to Dahmer's apartment on the promise of money for posing nude. Once a lace drink had rendered Thomas unconscious, Dahmer decided he wasn't my type. Nonetheless, Dahmer strangled Thomas, taking Polaroid photos of the dismemberment process. No remains were ever found. 1991 February 18, Curtis Durrell Strotter, 17 Approached by Dahmer as he waited at a bus stop near Marquette University. 
Delmer lured Strotter to his apartment, where he drugged, handcuffed, and strangled him before dismembering his body in the bathtub. He retained Strotter's skull, hands, and genitals. April 7, Errol Lindsay, 19 The first victim upon whom Dahmer practiced what he later described to investigators as his drilling technique, a procedure in which he drilled holes into the victim's skull, through which he injected hydrochloric acid into the brain. According to Dahmer, Lindsay awoke after this practice after which he was again rendered unconscious with a drink laced with sedatives, then strangled to death. Dahmer flayed Lindsay's body and retained the skin for several weeks. His skull was found following Dahmer's arrest. May 24, Tony Anthony Hughes, 31 Hughes was lured by Dahmer to his apartment upon the promise of posing nude for photographs. As Hughes was deaf, he and Dahmer communicated using handwritten notes. The injection of hydrochloric acid into Hughes's skull proved fatal. His body was left on Dahmer's bedroom floor for three days before being dismembered, with Dahmer photographing the dismemberment process. His skull was retained and identified from dental records. May 27. Connor accent the Sumphone, 14. The younger brother of the boy Dahmer had assaulted in 1988. Synthe Sumphone was drugged and had hydrochloric acid injected into his brain before Dahmer left him unattended as he left the apartment to purchase beer. When he returned, he discovered Synthe Sumphone naked and disoriented in the street with three distressed young women attempting to assist him. When police arrived, Dahmer persuaded them he and Cynthia Sumphone were lovers and that Cynthia Sumphone was simply intoxicated. When police left Cynthia Sumphone with Dahmer in his apartment, Dahmer again injected hydrochloric acid into Cynthia Sumphone's brain, and this proved fatal. His head was retained in the freezer and his body dismembered. June 30, Matt Cleveland Turner, 20 On June 30, Dahmer attended the Chicago Pride Parade. At a bus stop, he encountered a 20-year-old named Matt Turner and persuaded him to accompany him to Milwaukee to pose for a photo shoot. Turner was drugged, strangled, and then dismembered in the bathtub. His head and internal organs were put in the freezer and his torso subsequently placed in the 57-gallon drum Dahmer purchased on July 12th. July 5th, Jeremiah Benjamin Weinberger, 23, met Dahmer at a gay bar in Chicago and agreed to accompany him to Milwaukee for the weekend. Dahmer drilled through Weinberger's skull and injected boiling water into the cavity. He later recalled Weinberger's death to be exceptional, as he was the only victim who died with his eyes open. Weinberger's decapitated body was kept in the bathtub for a week before being dismembered. His torso was placed in the 57-gallon drum. July 15th Oliver Joseph Lacey, 24. A bodybuilding enthusiast whom Dahmer enticed to his apartment on the promise of money for posing for photographs. Lacey was drugged and strangled with a leather strap before being decapitated, with his head and heart being placed in the refrigerator. His skeleton was retained to adorn one side of the private shrine of skulls, and skeletons Dahmer was in the process of creating when arrested one week later. July 19, Joseph Arthur Braidhoft, 25 Dahmer's Last Victim Braidhoft was a father of three children from Minnesota who was looking for work in Milwaukee at the time of his murder. He was left on Dahmer's bed for two days following his murder before, on July 21st, 
being decapitated. His head was placed in the refrigerator and his torso in the 57-gallon drum. Stay tuned again next week for another episode of the True Crime Tales. Be safe and see you again next time.